welcome to More Than a Song, where you get a chance to experience great music in an intimate concert setting. I'm Denise Graves, and today we'll feature Russ Lee. His voice is featured on 10 number one singles, including lead vocalist of the band New Song. His soulful voice is easily recognizable on radio, and his solo hits include Live What I Believe and I Smile. Let's enjoy his first set today. Here's Russ Lee. What is the sun if you don't give life? How do the stars shine? What are these days if you don't give life? How will these bones rise? Yeah. shakes and the mountains break. I won't be afraid cause you are faithful. Falling on my knees, Lord, you're holding me and I won't be afraid cause you are faithful. When the whole earth shakes and the mountains quake, I Faithful, oh, Lord, you 
lost and all alone looking for a reason for being in this crazy world trying to go on looking for the answers to the questions and there you were from the moment you appeared everything became so clear i'm so glad that you're here lord i smile when i think about the way you turn my life around i smile when i think about the happiness in you i'm found i'm so amazed at what you Yes, to come. Well, I smile. Yeah, I know I smile. Wandering the dark, lost in the confusion. I thought I was losing my mind for sure. I searched with all my heart, looking for direction. Something to believe in And there you were You were reaching down to me You were everything I needed I'm so glad you found me, Lord I smile when I think about The way you turn my life around I smile when I think about Ministry is what Russ Lee is all about. His powerful testimony of searching for satisfaction in money and drugs changed when Christ transformed his life. Now in concert settings, his story leads to powerful ministry moments. Recently, Terry Black sat down with Russ to catch up on his story. Well, Russ, tell me a little bit about the song we just heard. It's called I Smile, right? It, it is, it is. I was on my way home from a writing session. I was working on um, songs for a project and I was on my way home and I was listening to Christian radio uh -huh. and all of the songs were very depressing. They were like blue. There was a lot of sadness just kind of, I was like, man, if I wasn't a Christian, I might be depressed because <laughs> these all, I don't know if the DJ was having a bad right. day, but he was playing all the saddest Christian songs he knew about just hanging on. Right. And um, I just thought to myself, you know, someone should write a happy song about the joy of being saved. My mm. life is so much better yes. since I, was, I became a Christian and a mm -hmm. follower of Christ. And so and then I thought, you know, someone who's a songwriter should write a happy song. And then I remembered I'm a songwriter. That's pretty cool. So I started working on that song, <laughs> I Smile, and my buddy Eddie Carswell, uh -huh. another friend of ours we've written a lot of songs with named Leonard Alstrom, we got together and I kind of told them the idea and they helped me write, write the song, I Smile. Well, okay, I have so many questions, but let's just sort of start at the beginning. Okay. Because we know you as singing with new song, and, and as you just shared, you've been on your own as well. But 
it didn't start there. Can you just share um, with us about your testimony? I know we don't have a whole lot of time, but just share sure. share with us what your life was like before Christ, and then I can tell what's happened after that. Um, well, I grew up in East Tennessee, uh, oldest of four children. I have a mother who was wonderful, but struggled with uh, a physical mental illness. And mm -hmm. so uh, my father became an alcoholic when I was uh, a teenager, really trying to deal with four kids and a wife who didn't recognize him half the time. Mm -hmm. She was wonderful when she was with it. She was amazing. But there were a lot of times where she didn't know who she was or who we were. And mm -hmm. so it was really difficult. And so growing up, I just began to look for the things that would satisfy me or that I felt like were missing. Money was one of the things that was missing from our lives because we had so much dysfunction. But my parents loved us and they really tried to do the best they could. My father started drinking to cope with the stresses of his family because he didn't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, what became, uh, what looked like an island for him became a prison for us. And so in two years, after my dad started drinking, when I was 13 years old, he became an alcoholic. Uh, my mother continued to deteriorate. So as a teenager, I had no direction. So I decided just to figure it out on my own. And I ended up playing guitar in bar bands for drinks and singing uh, in places, going to places I would never want my children to go. And, mm -hmm. and I started using drugs recreationally as a 13-year-old. And I started selling drugs when I was 15. And I became a drug dealer when I was 17. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and then one night I realized that the end of this road was not going to be a happy ending. Some of my friends that I was in business with and I was, as we say in the South, running with, yeah. a lot of those people, their lives were miserable. And some of the older ones that were ahead of me, uh, their lives were so miserable. And I just knew that I was looking for something. I just wanted to wake up one morning and to be okay. Yeah. And so I was I've kind of had this constant fear of being caught. At the same time, I was bitter toward mm -hmm. I don't know who. I, I didn't know if there was a God, but mm -hmm. I thought surely there had to be someone up there who made yeah, us. And so right. one, one night in desperation, I said, God, I don't know who you are, but I want to know who you are. And I can't find you, mm -hmm. but I feel like I need you. And so, God, if you're there and you can hear me, I wish you would find me because I, I, I need something. I didn't even know how to pray. And uh, I honestly wasn't looking for Billy Graham's Jesus. I was just looking for someone to throw right. down a rope, you know. And, and you were desperate. I was very desperate. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I prayed the same prayer the next day. I was more miserable the next day of my life. The things that I had surrounded myself with and the treasures that I held, they felt so empty to me. Mm -hmm. And so I said, God, there has to be something. If, and then, and then on, that was a Thursday. On Friday, I said, God, are you there? Can you even hear me? Saturday morning, mm -hmm. uh, someone showed up at my house unexpected who I thought was the most perfect person. He was the guy that I always wanted to be. Okay. Uh, he was very popular, talented, wealthy, had the most beautiful girlfriend, and I used to go, man, I wish my life was like his instead of like mine. And so were you friends? We or? were good friends, but okay. he had never been to my house okay. because he knew what happened at my house. And okay. when I had started to get off in the drug culture, he did not want to have anything to do with that because he had mm -hmm. good, strong parents who kept him out of trouble. Right. Well, he showed up at my house uninvited one Saturday and told me, stood on my steps and told me that he felt the same way I did and had prayed almost the same prayer I did, almost the same time I did. And he said, Russ, the strangest thing happened. I stopped and talked to Bill Walker, who was the pastor of the little Baptist church in our town. And he was a customer of my buddy's hardware store. And he said, uh, Bill Walker told me about Jesus. And he said, Russ, have you ever thought about Jesus? Have you mm -hmm. considered him? And, and, and then he said, you're the first person who ever told me about Jesus. And he reminded me that when I was little, my mother would send me to vacation Bible school yeah. and they would teach me about Jesus. But I only memorized Bible verses and songs to win prizes because yeah. poor <laughs> okay. kids like prizes. Sure. So I'd go back to school and my friends would talk about vacation and I would talk about baseball and vacation Bible school. He said, Russ, 10 years later, he stood on my steps and said, Russ, Thursday night, Bill Walker told me that what I needed was Jesus. And he said, when he was telling me that, I could see you in my mind telling me about God loving the world and sending his son. Do you remember doing that when we were little? Well, I had lived 17 years without Jesus. I'd lived 10 years of my life knowing that, wow. uh, but never really understanding it. He said, Russ, you're going to think I'm crazy because he knew what I was into. He said, Thursday night, Russ, I prayed and asked Jesus Christ to forgive me of my sins and to wash me clean and to be my Lord and Savior. He said, man, it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I feel like a million pounds has been lifted off me. He said, I'm going to be baptized Sunday, and I wanted to invite you to watch me be baptized because you're really the first person who ever took the time to tell me about Jesus. Wow. And I knew when he said that, that God had sent him to my house. That's amazing. And so the questions were answered, and the issue was settled. And I went to 
church with him and I sat on the second row and the preacher said in one minute if you'd like to know Christ I want you to meet me down front. I didn't know a preacher minute was longer than 60 seconds. I just <laughs> thought he meant in a minute. Yeah. So I waited 60 seconds and I stood straight up and interrupted service and I walked right down front and he said what are you doing down here? And I said you said if you want to get saved you need to come down front in a minute and well it's been a minute and so I just want to get saved. Oh my and he gosh. cried and grabbed me and stopped the service and oh, led me to Christ beautiful. and my life was changed that day. That was October wow. of 1980. Three months later, I, I tell people the next Sunday I was standing in the choir loft wearing a red satin moo moo singing Victory in Jesus. They called it a choir robe, but it looked like a moo moo to me. It looked like one of those things my grandmother wore around the house, okay. a house coat. And uh, I, I was happier than I'd ever been and I knew my life was changed. And I said, Lord, I don't know how you can use me or what I have, but here it is. And three months later, I was on a tour bus. Really? Uh, three months it's, later, I was on the road. So you were always given the gift of music. Well, I grew up with music. My mm -hmm. family was very musical. I had never really sung in front of people, mm -hmm. per se, who were sober and listening. Right. I'd never really sung in front of people much because I was, I was very... Uh, I played guitar and I didn't want to sing in front of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I got saved, I started singing in the choir and the choir director, who's also the youth pastor, who discipled me, he's a pastor now in Tennessee named right. Gary Miller. He said, you're a good singer. Did you know that? And I said, no, I, I don't know what I can do. He said, well, let me work with you. So he did. And a friend of his ha traveled in a music group and they were looking for a male singer and he introduced me to him. And I flew to Dallas, Texas and got on a tour bus and this journey began. That's amazing. So what? What you started out, God totally transformed. It belonged to him all along. And I found you out. have not only sang songs in so many different venues, you're with New Song, but you are a songwriter. Your whole life typifies that you are ch that your life is more than a song. It well, really is. Well, God is a God of grace and mercy mm -hmm. and second chances, and God has a great story for mm -hmm. anyone who will listen. And I believe that with all my heart. Um, mm. And, and I, I know for me, uh, God found me, I was lost. I didn't find him, he wasn't lost. I was mm. lost. And he rescued me, he answered that prayer beautifully. God gave me an amazing wife and family, an incredible ministry. Um, and he's everything to me. I don't have anything outside of what God redeemed mm -hmm. and gave to me. And um, my buddy said, you were like um, Moses and you threw your music on the ground and God blessed it and picked it up and handed it to you and told you to use it for his glory. And music is your stick. That's your thing that God mm -hmm. gave you to use. And so I'm just grateful to God for the opportunity and mm -hmm. for the gifts and and. Uh, I'm thankful that God will let me do anything, and uh, it's been an amazing journey. Oh, and I'm so glad we're a part of it with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Oh. 
darkness, walk on through the night, walk on through your weakness till you see the light and remember who's with you, remember he's strong. And when you are weary, he'll carry you on. Walk on through the darkness, walk on through the night, walk on when you're weary till you see the light. stars who's holding you in space are they the hands that hung the moon in place and who tells the sun to wake up when it's time to rise and still watches over me when i sleep at night and there's only one answer you are the clue that holds us together that took the nails with love and opened heaven's doors up wide for us and who is the one that speaks a word and calms our hearts when everything around tries to fall apart and there's only one answer you are the glue that holds us for joining us for more than a song. We would love to hear from you. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us and we will pray with you for the Holy Spirit to move on your behalf. Until next time, keep looking for the message behind the music and listen for the new song he sings over you. I'm Denise Graves and I'll see you next week. You hold me close, you hold me close.